Hello guys, welcome to the studio. Um, so uh, today we're going to do another Manet. Um, I found some more photos and um, this one I like it and I cropped it a little bit because it was not fitting the, the size. So I might have to elongate it a little bit to make it fit because I don't want to lose too much information on both sides. So anyway, uh, so I just, uh, I'm just going to tape the paper again so you can see how I do it. So basically I put the, the paper on the on the board, um, I'm using white tape. So I put a little piece of, of tape at the top to hold the paper. So I have a little piece here. And I'm just gonna tape the sides. Like this. The other side. So I'm going to get rid of that little piece up. Okay. So just a little trick. Uh, I'm actually saving the tape. Um, you see, I put them on the easel here so I can reuse them for another painting. For this one, I always start with a with a clean tape, so it helps to make look it. I mean, it helps that um, for the painting to look good on the on the TV. But when I do more personal work, I can use those those things. So anyway, so you have my palette. You're used to it. Um, uh, the the Queen turpentine colors. So let's start. So I'm gonna um, uh, I'm gonna do the close-up of the painting to start, so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to start, as usual, with a large brush. So the harmony of colors on this one is uh, really beautiful. And I feel, I don't know if you see it, but I feel like the background is kind of under a layer of orange with some uh, cyan blue. So I'm going to take both. As you can see, I haven't worked for a couple of days, so my paintings are kind of uh, dry. So when you have some skin like this, I can show you. When you have some, you know, residue like this, I just, you know, take them out of the palette. I don't want them to come on the, on the painting. So, you know, sometimes I like to mix the painting directly on the on the, pa on the paper, but on this one particularly, it's kind of difficult because my paintings, as I said, they were pretty dry. So, you know, usually I work pretty much every day, but today is Labor Day. Yesterday was um, Sunday. So, sometimes I take some days off to spend time with the family. Once again, painting for me is not like a like a job, so I don't mind working every day. And it's almost like um, running or working out. You know, it's I feel it's good to do it every day. So I keep the momentum, I keep the energy, I keep the what I'm doing, and I keep the habit of doing it. So you saw I, as usual, I outline quickly the. The structure of the of the painting, the vase, and so on. I'm doing the the background. Same thing. I don't want to spend too much time, so you know, I'm painting pretty largely and not paying attention to details yet. I have something that comes here. I feel like there's something here. It goes down here a little bit. So you see on this one particularly, it's really interesting because, you know, I talked about the passage a lot, you know, like the way the light gets in and out. And on this one particularly, it's really interesting because you can see that actually it's going here. So the, the, the color of the background is going in the vase and it's going here as well. So there's no limitation here. So I just can paint that right away. Uh, on this side, I feel like 
it's not the same, so I'm going to keep it this way for now. As you can hear, my dogs are out. They're barking outside. So, um, you know, same thing, some white. I want to keep it vibrant, so I want to see some brush work in that foreground. I don't want something too flat. Um, there's this nice little white here, and then... So I was able to find some more flowers by uh, Mane on, uh, online. So this one is actually, I don't think this one, the colors are that much alterated from the original. It's possible a little bit, but um, I'm going to work on the shadow. My brush are a bit stiff, so once again, no work for two days. It's no good. And I forgot to put my brush in water. You know, I told you I store my brush into a bowl of water, a glass of water here, this one. There's a little bit of water at the bottom. And I put my, my brushes here when I leave the studio. So when I come back, it's usually still flexible. And I forgot to do it. So it's no big deal. It just, you know, the brushes are a bit stiffer than usual. I'm running out of orange on the palette, so I'm going to add a little bit, even if I don't feel that there's a lot of orange on that painting, but we can still add a little bit of orange here. So you see, on this one particularly, on, 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 um, I got a yellow, I have two yellows, and um, this one is beautiful, but this one is, is really already in the orange field, so if I want to make a green, I would use this one and not this one, because this one being orange, if I mix it with blue, um, it's going to be a little bit strange, but the reason why um, I have those two yellow is because uh, oh, this one is already dry, you see there's a skin already on it, so it's fine, it's okay. So the reason why I have those two yellow is because uh, when I went to the art store, I, you know, sometimes I just, um, so when I go buy painting, I open the tubes. You cannot trust the, the tag on the on the, the tube, so I open them and I look, and sometimes I see some colors and I'm just like, wow, I love it, I want that color. So, then I get it. Um, I order a lot of stuff online, so ordering stuff online is great. You see all my colors here are already dry, so I'm gonna have to refill the, the palette, but it's okay. Yeah, I like to, I, I order stuff online, but you know, it's difficult online to see really how the colors gonna be, so if you know if you work with the color already, then you're fine. But some some colors you might be surprised because you know they arrive and they're not what it's on the website or whatsoever. But once again, sometimes I, I just like to go to the art store and check the colors and when I see one that I really like. You know, it's like falling in love for a color. It's a it's a it's a really nice thing when you when you get excited about, you know, a color. So I'm going to clean a little bit the, the palette. So I'm going to use an old piece of cloth, a rug, and with, with my knives, you see, I just scrubbed the, the past color, the one that are dry. It happens often, so regularly I scrub the, the palette and replace the colors with new colors. So it's why I'm working on a tile, so you can go to any kind of hardware store. Now they have those really large scale, uh, really large size tiles, so you can buy one and use it as a palette. Find something that is a bit, um, of course, that is smooth. And, and if you can, get something that is white. The reason why uh, I work on, let me come back. Okay, the reason why I work on um, I work on white is when you mix the colors, you see you see what you're doing, and still, as you can tell, you know the the area of clean is shrinking because of course there's some residue around, but by keeping the center clean, I can still see what I'm doing. 
Um, what do I need? Maybe some more green. The dark green, is it the dark green? Maybe. Okay. For now it's gonna be fine. Maybe I need a little bit of that green that has a lot of blue in it. Yeah, this one. So you see, I'm always trying to keep my, my palette clean. I mean, I know there's some painters who like to have their palette really messy, but I, li I like to keep the whole thing organized. I'm going to start working on the flowers. So this beautiful red flower. There's this one. Here we have some darker red. Now we're going to something much lighter. And on those flowers, I, I kind of don't mind putting quite a, a thick coat of white. I'm sorry, the, the, the recording stopped for a little while. My GoPro ran out of, of battery. Anyway, um, I think we're fine. I think everything is recording properly. And let me make sure. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to the, what we are doing. So I was, I was working on those beautiful flowers. And I think they're much more violet purple in some way so I'm just gonna play with it for now like this I might need some more white so I keep all my tubes of colors in a in a plastic bucket because the problem of those the tubes of color is that sometimes they, they the, the oil is pouring out of the tube so if you keep them on something clean it might become a mess in few few weeks so i keep them in the in the in a in a plastic container so even if the the oil got dissociated and start pouring around it doesn't go anywhere so they're just a bit sticky on the end so it's not the best sensation but that's okay So I've noticed that on some of the paintings I've done, the, the one prior to this one, some of the white is still not dry because I didn't put enough liquid into it. Uh, it's no big deal. I'm just going to let them sit for another couple of days. Usually the white on paper will dry eventually. It's not going to be necessarily the case on canvas. So it's why if you work that on canvas, it definitely adds some liquid to your, your colors. When you, you'll see, you'll get used to it. You will notice that some of your colors dry fastly and other don't. So just work with what you have, because we might not use the same brand and so on. Even if, uh, uh, um, which one is it? This one. Even if what I want to do at some point is to give you a list of the material I'm using, I need to work on that. I'm pretty sure by the time I will release those videos, I will have something that says what kind of material, brands, and so on I'm using. You see, I'm trying to figure out what colors are where and so on. So it's more a game of, uh, you know, finding which one is bluer, which one is redder, which one is darker, which one is lighter. So it's okay to be a bit ADD when we paint because it's, it's a lot about being ADD. It's a lot about, you know, judging things and feeling, oh, this one is darker and so on. 
So there's a lot of jobs where being ADD is not great. I think when it comes to painting, we might have to be ADD a little bit. And you see, I'm working almost like a jigsaw puzzle. So I have some green. I know there's a green here. Um, there's some stuff going on here. I don't really know what it is. And I'm trying to avoid to name. So there, there's something really complex in that painting is the here, that area. It's just a mess. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, there's a lot of brushwork. You know, if you look at that, if you insulate that area of the painting, it's almost like abstract. It's actually something I want to work on. A, um, eventually, I will work on it, which is um, doing a little bit of um, of working on some on insulating some of the, the the area of the painting. So I will show you that you know there's this big conflict between between figuration and abstraction. Um, actually, a lot of figurative painting, when you look close, they look like abstract. They actually abstract, and we can always imagine that an abstract painting is just a little piece of a larger figurative one. Some artists really want to create abstract art, so people like Mondrian and um, one of my favorite painters, Brown von Veld. Now that said. Um, There are some other artists that we think are abstract and we actually were figurative. I'm thinking about Mark Rothko. Rothko always said he was a figurative painter. So, you know, abstract and figuration are two different approach of the space. It's all about the space. It's all about an abstract painting an abstract painting doesn't represent a space. The space is the painting. We'll talk about that someday. It's kind of interesting to try to understand. Because there's this big, big thing, you know, like uh, on my social media, it comes back quite often where people are kind of arguing about is it an abstract painting or a figurative painting? I think it's interesting, we can, someday we can talk about it. So now that you've been used to, I don't know if it's the first time you see me painting or not, but uh, if it's not the first time, now you, you saw me already doing the paintings, you know, and almost like, uh, you know, just uh, having a good time, not trying to struggle or whatsoever, because once again, I think the joy you have to do, to do a painting is also the joy you're going to transfer to the viewer. So if you if you have a bad time painting, if you struggle, if you really if you get upset or something, people are going to see it. And by the way, it's absolutely possible to do a painting like this with a lot of anger. You know, like Argh! you will get a total different result if you paint with anger or if you paint with peace in your art. And I'm not sure one is better than the other, actually. So I'm going to switch off of brush now. I feel like uh, um, I need to just um, do something more detailed. This one is complex because you see all that all that stuff here is so. So you see, this one is really transparent because I have a lot of oil. When I put that green, this one on the on the palette, it was sweating oil. That means that. The pigment got, got dissociated from the lion, the, 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 the link, the, the oil. So sometimes when you have, a, when you have a, a tube of painting, you put it on your palette and all you got is transparent, clear oil. Because, you know, either it sits for too long on a shelf or just because of the nature of the pigment itself. Some, some pigments don't, you almost need to... I mean, you can, you don't have to, but you can almost use a palette knife and remix them. So it's possible. You know, I can take my palette knife and remix that green with that oil. I can do it now then, you know, so I can show you, you know, you can just remix it. So the thing is that that green is going to get more creamy, of course, because now it has a lot of density of oil. I have some green on my palette knife, so 
I'm just going to put it here. I don't like to do that usually, but it's just for fun. I don't really care. Um, so I'm going to do an undertone because, okay, there's a lot of brushwork here. So I'm going to paint them on top of something else. So I'm, I'm doing an undertone that is woody liquid, so woody transparent. So I can come back with some um, thick colors to draw that space. You know, same thing, I feel like here we have a lot of green and blue and so on. So in order to do that, I'm just going to take the, the... So you see, I'm I'm using on my brush, I have some green, some white, and I don't really mix it. I'm going to mix it directly on the canvas. And if it catches some pink and so on, it's okay. All I want right now is just catching that undertone. So when I come back with some little dots of white, which are the little flowers, then I'm just going to go over that and it's going to be perfect. Like the same thing, you see the undertone here, the green? This one is actually more of a thick color, I feel, like here. And so on this one, I will just come back with some little white dots and I should be fine. So since the beginning of that series, I told you the goal is to have fun. The goal of those paintings is for you to enjoy the process of painting. It's pretty much the main reason why I want to paint those flowers, because the drawing of the flower is not really difficult. And it's all about the colors. It's all about, you know, enjoying the colors. And So I really want you to keep in mind that I want you to have fun doing that. It's, the result does not really matter. We're not chasing a beautiful painting. The beautiful painting will come if we have fun, strangely. Because people will look at it and say, wow, you had fun doing that. Um, I can feel the energy and your happiness. So for the, those darker colors, you see I'm using some violet have some dark color here and have some dark color here goes in here I feel I have to go back with some orange I mean it's not orange it's oranger than what was underneath which was more blue You see, I'm just trying to get into the that thing here, but I will come back with some, as I say, with some lighter colors. that beautiful, beautiful blue line here. What also I want you to understand by doing those paintings before we start doing some more portrait and so on, is the fact that you can fix things. Um, I don't want you to get too, you know, you're not going to make it in, you know, right away. Sometimes you have to come back and fix something. So don't feel like you have to do everything right at the beginning. You have time, we have time. We have time to to paint and so sometimes you see like for example I see some beautiful orange red here so I'm just gonna mix and I'm just gonna apply it like this of course it's too much so I'm not happy with that but it's okay you know I'm gonna come back with some because it's too dark or something I don't know what I've done but anyway I'm gonna come back with some orange like this I feel like there's a lot of thing going on into that area that I don't understand what it is. So I'm just going to paint it 
you know, I'm just going to try to witness what I see. You know, it's a, painting is exactly like, okay, you, you know, you're somewhere and you witness something, whatever it is, you know, it can be, you know, the scene in the street, um, something going on, some kids playing, some, and all you're going to do is to try to remember what you saw and report it, make a, a document or something where you can explain to people what you've seen. Painting is a little bit like this. So, you know, um, sometimes I, I say to people, you know, the best way to paint is to paint like if you're an extraterrestrial and it's the first time you come on the planet and you see something and you need to bring it back to your people. You need to say, oh, I've seen that. And they tell you, what, what, what did you see? Then you have to, you have to try to explain. That's what we're doing right now. You know, the funny thing is, um, the first explorators uh, who came, you know, either to the United States, I mean, America at the time, and um, or other countries and so on, they were seeing animals or species, plants or whatever, and, and they didn't know what it was. And so the only way they could bring it back to the king or the lords or the people and so on was to paint or draw them. And quite often, the animal was not really sitting for them. You know, the animal was just like, okay, I'm going to eat you if you look at me for too long. So, so they had to paint those things quickly and so on. I mean, not necessarily quickly, but from, uh, you know, observation or not, but, you know, they didn't have all the time in the world. So I would like you to paint a little bit like this. So we're going back to our planet and we need to come back and say, okay, you know what? I've seen that beautiful bouquet of flowers. I mean, I cannot even see bouquet of flowers because I don't even know what is flowers. I just saw something beautiful and I did that little painting for you so you can see what it is. If you can paint like this, you're going to be a great painter. You're a witness. You're witnessing something and you're trying to describe it. So that's where it's really important not to be in a, in a relationship with uh, knowledge and memory, but just discovery, you know. You know, maybe, I don't know where we are in the, where you are in the, the, the video I've posted, but the other day I was talking about um, um, you know, being able to to paint with uh, without the pressure of you know um, making a beautiful painting. We're not making a beautiful painting. We're witnessing something. If you're a witness, beauty will come if people can share and understand what you what you've witnessed. So try to take the thing in a much more easier way than we're not making a masterpiece. We're making a document for some dudes at home that are not going to be lucky enough to see what we're seeing. And we need to make them understand how beautiful it is, or unique, or we were just like, oh my gosh, I've never seen that before. Imagine if you have to paint a cow, well, you've never seen a cow before. It's about the same thing. So you see now I'm moving around with some lighter colors and um, I'm gonna go pretty soon in the in all the flowers around the top you know I'm still working a little bit on what's in the vase I'm trying to recreate that mess I, I don't know what is up what has happened to him why do you Maybe you got mad or something. I don't care. There's definitely something going on here that is not like in the other flowers. It's why those flowers are not all equal in... I mean, maybe some people are going to think I'm crazy, but I'm, I will say they're not all equal in quality. Uh, it's not because it's Mane that all of them are absolutely masterpieces. Even if I love the work of Mane, but I, I, I don't think he, he took those flowers for as important for his work, then, for example, the 
luncheon of the grass and things like this were more, you know, they were more uh, history painting. I mean, historical. Even if it doesn't say a story like, uh, you know, like uh, a big battle or something, of course, the luncheon of the grass is, is not about that. It's just about a bunch of people having lunch on the grass. And you see, I look a lot at the original image. I spend more time looking at the original image than at my painting. And that's really important. Once again, if I'm witnessing something, it's more important for me to look at what I'm witnessing than what I'm doing. Otherwise, I might miss something in the process that might be really important. And please, please, please keep in mind, I want you to enjoy the process. And I don't want you to feel frustrated, like, oh, I can't make it, it doesn't, I don't like it, and so on. You know, it's... Um, if you can understand and figure out that, that thing about witnessing, then there's no good or bad painting. There's just a painting that tells a story, and some painting who don't. So you see, like, for example, I did a, some red, I'm going to put some green, just to get back to the color of the background. So I made the background with green, I mean, I'm sorry, or orange and blue, but I can also make the same background with red and green. There are several ways to get to the same colors. I will explain when I do the, the color theory lessons that there's an infinite way to get to a color. You know, it's almost like saying, okay, um, I want to go to Paris from, from where I live. I want to, I'm um, living in Florida, I want to go to Paris. You know what? There's not only one way, there's tons of ways. Of course, there's a direct flight from here to Paris, but I can also fly through, you know, Turkey or Indonesia or whatever. My final destination is still Paris, but the way I approach it is different. So it's the same thing for colors, you know, you can make colors so many different ways. And the experience of the color is going to be different, depending if you go through Turkey, Egypt, Indonesia, or whatever. So now I'm going to move to, I'm almost done. Um, I'm going to move to a smaller brush for all the little red, I mean white dots. So I'm going to, for this one particularly, I'm going to do something special. I'm just going to take some white and mix with liquid because I know I'm going to use pure white and I want that white to dry. So by mixing it with liquid, I know that eventually it will dry. Well, if I don't, it might be a bit tough on me and take a very long time to dry. So. And so in order not to mix with the other layers, I'm just turning my brush. You see, I'm turning, rotating my brush little by little. So I can drop white. And once again, force yourself to go back to what you're painting because our brain works this way. At some point, I'm going to stop looking at what I'm painting, I mean, at the subject, to just focus on what I'm, on what I'm doing. And as soon as I do that, I'm getting away from the nature of what I'm doing, which is trying to catch that beautiful atmosphere. So the more I'm going to look at the, the original painting I'm working on from, the more I have a chance to succeed in the rendering.
you know, the thing is that if you stop looking at what you're painting to just focus on your painting, then why do you even bother working from something? The reason why we work from something is because I do believe we don't have that amazing memory. Our memory is pretty limited, actually. Um, there's not a lot of painters who are capable to do a portrait from memory. And I'm not talking about the face, I'm talking about a portrait. Um, without something being, you know, like a trick, someone who's been doing it for, you see sometimes on, on the internet, there's some people who do the, you know, some sort of a painting live, and they even paint upside down the portrait of Einstein or whatever. Um, it's a trick. It's completely a trick. It's something they've been trained and trained and trained to do the same painting. And they can do that with the portrait of uh, Einstein or someone like this, but it's not, it's not like they can do it with everybody. So the thing is that our memory is kind of limited, limited, and um, the, I think, I mean, I know that David, David, the, not the David of Michelangelo, but the David, the French painter from the uh, 18th century, um, this guy was kind of a, was kind of a strange guy. I mean, he was a, he was pro Napoleon when first he was he was for the king before 1789. Then after the revolution he became um, a revolutionary. And then after when Napoleon was coronated he became a, a pro empire. So he was kind of a, you know he knew how to navigate. Let's say it's simple, but simply, but you know. It, I don't care, I'm not judgmental on that thing, but the fact is that what's extraordinary is that he had a meeting with the the emperor, and you know, I mean, maybe you don't, but he did this giant painting of uh, the coronation of Napoleon, and it was something really important at the time, so a lot of really important people wanted to be represented on the painting, of course, you wanted to be there, you know, it was like a it's like the concert of Lady Gaga or the last concert of the Rolling Stones. You know, some people will want to be at this one, and um, which I hope will be the later as possible because I love them. And um, so he went to talk to the emperor, walked out of the the office. I mean, the, the, the not the office, but the place where he met Napoleon. He went to his studio and he did a portrait of Napoleon from memory, and that's just extraordinary. The possibility of doing that is just but I mean, he was super trained. He was just like, uh, because even the people who draw superheroes and so on, they draw from photos. They use reference to do all the movement and so on, because without reference, it's really difficult to, to paint. I've tried to paint from memory. I used to be a comic book artist when I was younger, so everything is from memory, but actually, nothing replaced the real thing. So when I was doing some, um, when I was drawing some, uh, some sets or even characters, some movement and so on, you know, I was, I was looking at either photos or something like this just to catch the, just to catch the unicity of things. Okay, I feel like I'm almost done. You know, once again, I don't want to overdo it. You know, we could work for days on that painting. So, the goal is not to make a copy. The goal is to make an experience. To experiment the joy of colors the liberation about, you know, like painting fast, having fun. Something liberating. Not something that's going to put you in a place where, you know, you feel frustrated and so on. When we'll start portraits, we have time to get really frustrated. You know, when we work for hours on the night and and we don't get it. Mostly the way I work, because I don't work 
um, I work for portraits the way I'm working right now. So it's more like moving all over the place and just trying to um, kind of having fun. Okay, I think I need to straighten that and I'm good. After it's really a matter of balance, it's really a matter of, of okay, what's important for me in that painting? And for me, for example, I can feel that that line here is important. And I chose a really bad color, which is kind of a blue. Well, I think it's more of a, of a yellow green. But once again, it's okay, I can just fix it, you know, I just... Uh, Getting some colors and okay, once again, I'm putting some white, so I need to put some liquid. The white's not gonna dry, but I feel like there's some there's some beautiful thing going on here, like thick white. So I'm just gonna do it like this. Okay. Same thing here, you see there's See, I felt for some reason that line here has to be sharp. And actually the circulation, the, you know, as, so as I told you, the circulation, look how that light here goes up from here, goes up here. That's part of the thing. That's part of what I explained about the, the circulation of light. Okay. So now you know the little ceremonial, which is taking off the, the tape to let those beautiful straight lines appear. Same thing, I put them on the easel. I want to make sure that my fingers are clean before I touch the canvas, so I'm going to use another piece of rug. You know, for the rugs, you can use your old t-shirts, your old clothes, or go to, uh, you know, it's easy to find rugs. You don't need to buy them from the art store and so on. Okay, this is the painting. So let me just go back to the big screen, a larger screen. Okay. And this is the painting. Another one. One more money. Uh, I have another. I need, uh, I think I need 12. Um, uh, four by four, maybe 16 actually. It's my ninth. So still quite a lot to do. Anyway, thank you. Bye bye.